It's a beautiful late winter's day in Sydney. That is the scene at Allianz Stadium. Roosters West Tigers, your third game of NRLW round six. And it's the Roosters chasing their fifth win of the campaign. They're four and one, beaten only by the Raiders. Very settled for coach John Strange. Do you look at the lineup there? Isabel Kelly leading the side in the centres. Matt Russell alongside Tasha Gale. In those four wins they've had, Tasha, they've posted 30 points or more each time. A real test of the Tigers' defence today. Yeah, quite correct there, Matt. It's a, It promises to be another cracker of the game here because these two teams are the two top defensive teams. But the problem for the Tigers, as you've just mentioned, is that, is that the Roosters are also the top attacking team. So Mia Wood to make her NRLW debut on a wing for the Roosters in jersey number five. Pani Hopawati coming in as well. Here is the opposition, Brett Kamali's West Tigers. They won their first two games, but have since suffered three straight defeats, all by skinny margins. Pauline Piliae Rasembale, part of every game so far in her rookie season of NRLW. The former Wallaroo and state netballer making a fine fist of rugby league. She certainly is. She is improving with every single game. She's linking up the left edge attack of Apps to Funga and winger Jakaya Whitfeld, where they are scoring the majority of their tries. So she's in the halves today alongside Bo Vetti Welsh, who moves from full back into the halves to cover the injury to Lausana Lutu. And here's Bo fullback for the first four appearances this season and here come the Roosters trying to go four straight and post their fifth win of the season a rare home ground appearance there's the assistant coach and New South Wales coach Kylie Hilda Jocelyn Keller her five try assists she'd love to go level with Racine McGregor this afternoon she's moved into the halves this season as part of this new look spine. Corbin Baxter, Taryn Aitken, Jocelyn Kelleher, Keely Davis, all experienced spine members, but not together. They've come together at the Roosters under John Strange. And boy, haven't they found some form. They certainly have. They're, they're gelling together perfectly, complementing each other's games. It's going great for the Roosters. A couple of beauties earlier on in Sydney at Cogra. NRLW, what do we get here? The third game of the round. And it's West Tigers with first use of the footy. Christian Pio, off big running metres last week, all season it must be said. And as Piliate Rasembali just goes for a pass to bring Sarah Tongatuki into play. So an early touch for both starting front rowers. Well, Sarah Tongatuki, as, he's, as we mentioned earlier, got a point to um, make here today, but she is averaging 177 run metres a game. And she's been big to start the season, as has Tonga Tuki. A slashing try in round one, a second carry in the opening set, inviting Ebony Pryor to explore out of dummy half. And they'll complete the opening set here. And it's the kick from Pilia Air Rasembali. An experienced or a veteran rookie at 31 years of age. The field is taken now by Bridie Parker. Good catch. A nice involvement from the Tigers number six through that first set. Yeah, very much so. But I love the way the wingers for the Roosters, they've come in and they've taken the first two hit-ups, which, you know, gives their forwards a little bit of a break. Strong first carry from Mia Ward. The NRLW debutante. The nerves will ease a little after that opening carry. Always important to get that first tackle or first hit up of the ball. Now Maya Hill Moana in her fourth game of the season, the 15th of her career. Killer her goes to Aitken and now on an edge. Otessa Bullet, this 20-year-old young talent, the Roosters Rookie of the Year last season. Aitken, long. Here's Brady Parker, only one to beat, and she gets the job done. Bridie Parker caps the Roosters' first set by scoring her fourth try of the season. So good to see Bridie Parker scoring. Of course, she missed a season uh, last year due to an ACL, which she did in the grand final, but she's back in fine form. Obviously all her rehab has paid off, but it's the run prior 
that we'll see here from Atessa Pule. She finds a front, gets to her feet quickly, allows for a quick play the ball. And what about the vision on Aiken? Beautiful long pass out there to her left to put winger Bridie Parker over for four points to open up the scoring. Bridie Parker with the finish she had work to do, did well to maintain possession. As we watch the replays, we'll come back to Taryn Aiken and the form she's found in her first year as a rooster after four at the Broncos. But Bridie Parker, she's been a good finisher through her four seasons at the Roosters, 2018. And then the last three, in fact, it's 18, 20, 21 and 23 for Bridie Parker. Recovering from that ACL. So Jocelyn Kelleher from the sideline strikes it nicely, brings it back brilliantly. A big smile on the face of Jocelyn Kelleher. No doubt her coach as well. What a start by the Roosters. Absolutely. Jocelyn Kelleher really finding her boot there. A difficult conversion, but as we see here, the pass from Aiken, that vision straight into the arms of Bridie Parker. She did have a fair bit of work to do there, but spatial awareness is great. She managed to find the grass by moving her, her, her right arm around the bodies of the West Tigers. There's the beneficiary of Taryn Aitken's brilliant work. Seven try assists wait, wait. now for Taryn. She's had 14 try involvements this season, the most of anyone. Taryn Aitken a provider for the Roosters, be it scoring tries or setting them up. And they're going to work again. Maya Hill Moana looking better with each outing, the Roosters. The only blip being that round two defeat in Canberra. Now Olivia Koenig working on the right edge for the Tricolours as they come back towards the middle. And Keely Joseph, the Roosters' pathway product of a fantastic 12 months in 2022. What a 12 months that's been. She made her NRLW debut, her State of Origin debut, and you guessed it, a Jillaroo well World Cup debut. Surges with the carry as they go back for Joseph. Now Aitken, Corbin Baxter chimes in. Here's a chance for Kelly on the left. Tackled well by Rakia Horn sliding down around the legs. Final play, Roosters. 20 metres out, Aitken had to reach for the ball, grub as well, the bounce in behind Staines. And that posed some problems for the Tigers, an unkind bounce at the end. The club debutante couldn't do much, but watch it go over her head. Well, that's a tough break for Tess Staines, but a brilliant kick by Taryn Aiken. Tess left no choice there, had to kick that one dead, and the West Tigers now forced with a goal line dropout. Right start to the game from Taryn Aiken, try assist, then a grubber to force a goal line dropout. She's forced five of them so far this season. Maya Hill Moana. And I love the way Taryn Aiken now is, is floating left and right and playing to the cues. It's really opening up for the Roosters attack. Joseph goes through the middle again, off the back of Hill Moana. They open up both sides of the field, but set up on the left. And the ball comes that way for Aitken, showing it once. And now Kelleher, Parker will look for a double. Bridey Parker down low, reaching out. She says she found the line. It's been ruled uh, knock babe. on by Mitch Curry, the referee. Yes, go well, on. if that smile was anything to go for, I was nearly going to award it for her. I thought she fell a bit short. It's well spotted by the whistleblower. Little fumble there at the death. Maybe it was a look of not celebration, rather anguish that she'd gone so close but finished so short. Nearly got herself a double in the first eight or so minutes of the game. So all the ball early on with the Roosters. This is only the Tigers' second set. Rakia Horn just slipping under that tackle. Ovetti Welsh going to Keziaps on this much publicised four game winning streak. Part of the Brains Trust at the Tigers. Hollington Big sitting in out. between Tim Sheens and Benji Marshall. We'll chat to Benji on Fox League Channel 502 before that 5.30 game. But Keziaps has copped a knock here and he's slow back to her feet. Yeah, this is not good. It's 
Yep, the head, I think, of Olivia Koenig. Oh, she's got a bit of claret coming out of the nose. It'll take more than that to stop Kezi Apps. She may be forced off for a head injury assessment. As the replacement options watch on, Brett Kamali will first need an injury update on, on Kezi Apps. She's played every game this season. She scored those four tries. Last weekend, she averaged or ran more than 100 metres, four tackle busts. And yep, yep. it'll be a 15-minute spell at least for Kezi Apps. So the West Tigers, there's Brett Kamali there in the box, calling down to his bench as who's going to get up and fill Kezi Apps' shoes. Big boots to fill. Jessica Kennedy to come on. The Penrith product, which has come through the Tigers' pathway, has been a Tasha Gale Cup captain. The competition named after the great Tasha Gale, the under-19s <laughs> competition in New South Wales. Let's see what Jessica can do sent on early for Kezi Apps. Well, with that great pedigree, uh, pretty sure she'll do very <laughs> well out there. So a, a brief delay while Kezi is checked on. An opportunity for West Tigers to get the oxygen back in the lungs after the onslaught early from the Roosters. Tavanga elects to go it alone, straight into the teeth of the Roosters' defence. Keely Joseph and Koenig affecting the tackle. And now Christian Pio again, the former Sinclair Comet. Played all seven games for Parramatta in that grand final run last year. Nevada George catching pass through Piliar and Rasembali. More quick hands. It's put down by Horn. And some promising build-up. Breaks down without result for the Tigers. Yeah, they were looking great in attack there as it, as it went quickly out through the hands. Rukia Horn a little bit disappointed with herself. But that's playing confident footy as they push it out to the right edge. Just, yeah, I think she... Should have hung on to that one. She, she'll be disappointed with herself. Tess Staines just injecting herself in the back line, hurrying the pass to her centre as the defence arrived. They come up with a mistake and the Roosters go to Isabel Kelly. The Roosters as first try scorers tick off an important box for them because over the last three seasons, they're unbeaten when scoring the first try. It's a great record. And newcomers this year, the Tigers, will have lost both games when conceding the opening four-pointer. Here's Keely Joseph. A great kick turned the four points into six. Aitken from 25 out. She holds the ball, takes the line on. Davis for Koenig. Held by Nevada George around the legs. Kelly wanted a lifting tackle there. No love from the referee. It comes back for Keller, her, who kicks out towards Parker. Instead, it's taken really well in the field of play. But she was a sitting duck. Josie Lenas. Well, the Roosters are just relentless. They're rolling the ball down, putting so much pressure on the West Tigers. And they're facing another goal line dropout, and the Roosters get another crack. But in everything, Bridey Parker, it's good work by Linaz to, to take the catch. She had eyes only for the ball. She would have heard Parker coming. And then big contact, the short goal line dropout, scooped up by a forward-thinking Keeley Joseph. So the Roosters from only 10 metres out give it to a running Millie Boyle, who bounces onto the line. The Roosters get their second. The short goal line dropout blows up in the Tigers' face. It was scooped up by Keely Joseph and gave Millie, mighty Millie, the room to burst onto the ball. Mighty Millie, unstoppable Millie Boyle. From that far out, that momentum, here's the kick we see. Now, really well done by Keely Joseph to clean that one up. Quick play the ball through the hands to Millie Boyle. And she had some work to do, but you just cannot stop that. You know she's coming at you. You know what she's going to do. And she still goes straight over the top of you. For three seasons at Brisbane to a stint, a premiership year at Newcastle, and now the Roosters. She has been NRLW elite. The former Cabago Eel. The New South Wales Blue 
and Jillaru. What a run. That's why she's the reigning Dalian prop of the year. The Dalian medalists for the 2021 season. Jocelyn Kelleher successful with her first attempt, a butte kick. She was 50% last week, slightly above that through her career. And she's two from two today. The Roosters 12 lead the Tigers nil. Well, just 10 minutes into this great game. As we mentioned, Tigers are in the top two defensive teams, but we're just 10 minutes into the game and the Roosters have cracked them wide open. The Roosters have won every game this year. They've at least had a share of possession. Tasha, they've had 70% of the ball so far. Nearly 80% of the territory. That's why they're 12-0 leaders. They're dominating the stats. Yeah, they certainly are. They're starving the Tigers for possession. So the restart taken by Corbin Baxter. Maya Hilmoana brings them forward. Laying on the tackle there a little bit long. Now Olivia Koenig. Tackled by Ebony Pryor. They've been forced to do lots of that, the Tigers. And the Roosters sense that they're too good a team. Here's Keely Davis. She's been part of every NRLW season. She's the most experienced rooster out there at just 23 years of age. Playing her 29th NRLW game. Now Serge is speaking of experience. She's also headed towards 30 games in this competition. She gets a penalty. Tap and go. Allowed by Mitch Curry. They can smell blood in the water, the Roosters. They want more points here. Joseph, middle of the ground, feeding Boyle. There are three defenders to greet Millie. Aitken, long pass. It opens up now for the Roosters. Isabel Kelly delivers their third try. That's got all the ball, Tasha, all the territory, and all the scoreboard. And they're turning it into points. They're scoring it. Looks just for fun out there. We talk about stopping Millie Boyle. Try stopping Izzy Kelly. As we see the pass from Aiken again, another great long pass. Izzy Kelly goes over for her 13th career try. Up until this time, Jess Sergis and Izzy Kelly were both on 12. Well, Izzy Kelly takes the lead. And again, Taryn Aiken with her fingerprints all over this. Another beautiful pass to her left. The first was for Bridie Parker to score. Now she set up Izzy Kelly. There's not much Rakia Horn can do in that position, given the strength of this wonderfully credentialed NRLW centre. Yeah, it's great footy. Now it's important that the Roosters maintain the pedal to the medal. We've seen some frantic finishes, some great comebacks, some upset wins. This NRLW season has it all. Isabel Kelly, most tries for the Roosters, most games for the Roosters. And she's providing big numbers again as Jocelyn Kelleher from the sideline tries to stay perfect. No goal. She has her first miss. It's 16-0. But Isabel Kelly averaging 170 run metres. She's had 28 tackle busts through the first five weeks of the competition. And here she is, providing perfectly again Taryn Aitken. Absolutely. And what I like about Izzy's game is she's continually developing it. She's continually bettering herself. She's got a really nice little offload to her game. Let's talk about the Roosters' spine because fullback Corbin Baxter missed the 2022 season to deliver Bub Bowie. And then Taryn Aitken arrives from Brisbane. Jocelyn Kelleher moves into the halves. Keely Davis arrives from the Dragons. Yet it's come together quickly and supremely. Credit to coach John Strange. And the players, of course. Millie Boyle joining this player. Maya Hilmoana in the front row, effectively. That pass on the first mistake here as Tessa Bullet receives a, a wicked yeah, ball down around her ankles. She knocks it on. Here's a chance for the Tigers. 
Well, this is the best position the Tigers have been in all game. They're going to feed a scrum on the 20. It's a centre field scrum. They'll have a set play from here. We've seen so many tries come off in this very situation. Tasha, we're 15 minutes in. They had only three tackles in the Roosters' half. This will be number four as Tess Staines is taken to ground. Ten metres out. The Tigers in good possession through Kennedy. Pryor. Sending it to Nevada, George, catch and pass. Pilia Erasembali, quick hands. Staines, Horn is wrapped up by Parker, who flew out of the line. Good defence from the Roosters winger. Sarah Togatuki. Two good, Sarah. Sarah Togatuki brings some life back into this game. The first chance they get, they deliver. And Sarah says, come on, let's stage a comeback. Absolutely, our Austerlin matchup players, the two number eights. Sarah Togatuki says, anything you can do, Millie, I can do as well. I'm not saying it was better, because I think they were both sensational tries. But here's that error from the Roosters, just when we were giving them a wrap about how well they've gelled. And so the Tigers found themselves in good, in good territory. But I tell you what, no one was stopping Togatuki. What about the little stutter steps? Great stepped off the left, then the right. Pushing through players left, right and centre. Togatuki, and doesn't she just love it? She scored a slashing try in round one against Parramatta as part of that big 36-8 result. It was a barnstorming effort. Footwork, speed, evasion. And right there, despite the presence of so many Roosters defenders, Sarah, the 25-year-old front rower, in her fifth season of NRLW, after four years as a rooster, scores against her former club. And now Pilia Erasembale adds the extras. It's 16-6, 10 the difference. Who decided on our Austerlin key player matchup? Because it didn't involve Luke Brooks. It involved the two number eights in this game. Millie Boyle up against Sarah Tongatuki. They're both try scorers early. That's right, Maddie, and she's equal third for total run metres in the entire competition. And she gets those run metres up in the hard yards, through the middle. If you take out the um, running through the middle, she's first. There you go. The kick returns, you, you take that off. No one runs for more metres than the player on screen. So what does that do to the Tigers? Well, it's got to give them a bit of a boost. But this, this set, very important, Maddie. They've got to roll down, get to the kick. And Tonga Tuki again. Pryor keeps it going the same way through Pilia Erasembali. Out for the edge forward, Eliza Sialata. Three years as part of the West's Tigers under 19s, Eliza. Good to see a step up this year, one of the several rookies in the Tigers lineup. Tonga Tuki with another carry. It goes through George. On to Pio with an offload. Bovetti Welsh. No room after she received the ball. But like all good fullbacks, she was ready and waiting. Now the kick. Pilia Erasembali. Out for Bridie Parker. Well, they got to the kick, Matty, but they only made 40 metres prior to the kick. And the Roosters now, just on the first tackle, are already up at the 30. They joined us late. The Tigers rolled out with an unchanged 17 from the team named on Tuesday. The Roosters, though, the Roosters unchanged. The Tigers losing Losana Lutu. And that's on the back of losing their first choice halfback, Emily Curtin. Mm. Going there. Another wayward pass for the Roosters. So after a perfect start to the game, a couple of errors creeping in back end of this first half. Yeah, as soon as we give them a wrap, something always goes wrong. Maya Hill Moana gets nothing wrong with another carry. They come 50 metres and Jocelyn Kelleher gets a torpedo kick away. It's a brutal kick picked up by Kelly. Isabel Kelly to Aitken. And the scrambling defence does enough just 
What about the kick from Kelleher? A beautiful strike. Absolutely. Kick under pressure as well. Again, way without a dummy half. They burn a play there, the Roosters. That's only tackle one as Koenig fights to play the ball. And comes short side. Kelleher through the hands. And Wood has a try on her NRLW debut. Mia Wood, what a way to celebrate your first game by going over in the corner. Well, it's just showing how much talent we have in our great game. So many players this season on debut has, have managed to get themselves the four points. As we see this very difficult kick put up, Tess Staines unable to clean it up. And look, Izzy Kelly, we talked about she's added an offload. She does just that, which sets up in the next play. The Roosters have scored on the left, they've scored in the middle, and now they're getting a four-pointer on the right-hand side via debutante Mia Wood. Simple catch and pass. Well, they made it look simple. It's a bit more complicated than that. As they went to the right through Sergis, out for Wood, and Mia Wood. The 24-year-old on NRLW debut. She's played Harvey Norman at the Glebe Dirty Reds, and most recently, North Sydney Bears, a long rugby sevens career as well, but she's no stranger to rugby league and she climbs into the top tier in Australia. NRLW in for Jamie Frazard, out under HIA protocols. The try scoring sensation, Frazard, and Mia Wood continues the trend set by Jamie. Now the kick, just a little short. Kelleher says, I've got the accuracy right, just needed to give it a little bit more oomph. Well, that was unfortunate for the Tigers there. The, the Roosters did look a little bit broken in their attack on one or two occasions. On one of them, the Tigers capitalised as soon as they got down into decent territory and they managed to score. But then that kick by Jocelyn Kelleher, very difficult one to take for Tess, Tess Staines. And, uh, of course, the, Rupers, uh, the Roosters capitalise on it. Giving Brett Kamali plenty to work on. The 1999 Clive Churchill medalist, the 2000 Dallium half of the year, the 307 game are now in charge of the Tigers NRLW team. He's all that and an all round good break too. Absolutely. The girls love being coached by the man they call Noddy, Maya Hill Moana, with the return from the kickoff. Here's Kezi Axon, the knock that she took early in the game, playing on an edge, a key forward, and sadly, she has failed her head injury assessment. Kezi won't return today and won't become the first NRLW player to score in five straight games. More good go forward from the Roosters. Ebony Pryor too long on the tackle player. They're off and running again, the Roosters. Sergis gets the ball over the top to Wood. Koenig, Tawila, Fotumoala. They're very close again. The Sydney Roosters from only metres out. It's Koenig, the short ball, and Jess Sergis continues this route. It's Koenig to Sergis, and it's another try to the Roosters. Well, we mentioned how Olivia Koenig has got a brilliant passing game that she's been working on and she's opened up the right edge for the Roosters. And here is the perfect example. A brilliant little flat ball. Jess Sergis comes surging onto the ball as she does. Look at that nice little pass. And there's no stopping Jess Sergis. One of the players in this Roosters team to be part of every NRLW season. All six of them, Jess Sergis, Isabel Kelly, Keely Davis. Well, it's almost like Jess was aware that Izzy Kelly went up to 13 career tries and Jess was left at 12. <laughs> well, now they're 13 apiece. They play on different sides of the field, but their careers have so much in similar. Fantastic centres. Dallium Centres of the Year. New South Wales Blues, Australian Jilla Roos. 
spent time at St George Illawarra before coming to the Roosters. Very similar paths. And a real strike on both sides of the field for John Strange as a result. Keller hurt. This time it goes there across goes. the face. She's striking them nicely today. But 24-6. It's a convincing lead for the team coached by that man, John Strange. Yeah, the Tigers have got to hold them out. It's always important to try and get a try on the board just prior to half time. So we'll see if they can do that from here. But as we're watching, Jess Sir just going over. Those two that we were talking about, Izzy Kelly, Jess Sir, just they're the benchmark of, of the centres and have been for years. Tegan Berry out on top after more slashing tries earlier at, at Cogra. And there's a problem for Ebony Pryor, who's just holding a leg and being inspected sideline. They've had no luck today. They've lost Kezi Apps after they lost Losana Lutu, the halfback at training midweek. Now they've lost the hooker, at least momentarily. So key here. spy members out. A strike weapon on the edge, also out of the game. And Millie Boyle shows no signs of stopping. Well, we just saw uh, a strike edge on the bench there with the West Tigers. The oh, what a run there. Sorry, Tasha. A crashing effort from Amalia Pasakala out there in Jersey 17. A bulldozing run. And the, the Tigers just have to stick with their defence until they get the ball in hand and get themselves into decent territory. And here's another one. Kelleher to Koenig over the top. Here Sergis. Jess Sergis turns them inside out. The debutante has a double. Mia Wood goes in again. It's a Roosters route at Allianz Stadium. The Roosters are crowing. It's just putting tries on almost every couple of minutes. And I thought the last pass here from Jess Sergis, very unselfish play to give the debutante to bag a double on debut. Now there's that great hook pass out to Jess Sergis. She looks for all money like she can go over. Tess Staines may have been in a way, but great lead up work there by, by Keely Davis and the dummy from Jocelyn Kelleher. And there's that pass from Olivia Koenig and unselfishly delivers the ball to Mia Wood via Jess Sergis. Pretty sure she could have gone over herself. What a dream to boo it is for Mia. A first half double playing on the wing at the Roosters. This is good rugby league. Life's good. Life is good for Mia Wood. She, she was born in Randwick and of course is now a qualified exercise physiologist, so she's no dummy. Now Jocelyn Kelleher just saying to her teammates, come on, bring it in a bit closer to the posts. She's striking them well, but she's a long way out each time. And this one skews off to the left. Let's put this scoreboard in perspective. These are the best two defensive teams in the competition. But right now, the Tigers have given up 28 in the first half. Ebony Pryor is going to be taped up and they'll attempt to get her back out there. They desperately need their starting number nine. You can see the ankle being worked on there given the fact they've already lost Kezi Apps for the game. I'd hate to lose Ebony Pryor on top of that backline reshuffle that has seen Bo Vetti Welsh, the fullback, go to halfback for Lasana Lutu and Tess Staines jump into that fullback role in Jersey 17. Brett Kamali knows all about the ups and downs of rugby league. Corbin Baxter fields a, a kickoff that rolled awkwardly around her ankles. Tuila Fotumawala runs into a strong tackle from Tonga Tuki. Kelleher quickly to Millie Boyle, who gets that big fend, that bumper ready to go again, and Pilia Erasembali goes back to work. Davis to Keely Joseph, looking for another offload. Thought about it a couple of times, and still she works her way down the field. Nevada George eventually, eventually forcing her to ground. And in the play of the ball, that's gone for a bit Coming too much ball. pace and failed to play the ball correctly. Well, the Tigers...
can breathe a little sigh of relief, but they've got a lot of work to do ahead of them here. They will get the ball back from, from this scrum, but they're still starting out at the 40. We've seen them turn field position into points, but they've been starved at just 26% of the possession so far this half. The Tigers have most run metres, tackle busts and offloads in the competition. They've just had no ball, as that stats sheet shows you there. The possession, nearly 75% of it, with the home team relishing a rare home appearance. Brent Kamali watches on, wondering what his team can give us here. A couple of tries in the last seven minutes of this first half will bring them back into the contest. What can they create here with a bit more ball? Nevada George. The offload to Tongatuki. She can't get away from Koenig. Sophie Curtin out there now in jumper 14. Twin Emily out of the game with injury. Here's Staines. Looks light on her feet. In fact, it's Ja'Kai Whitfield who is light on her feet. She's been brilliant through the first five rounds. Hasn't seen much ball today for obvious reasons. The kick comes down and it's taken in goal by Bridie Parker. I wondered whether she had the back foot on the ground. The referee says she does. Seven tackle set for the Roosters. Yeah, great awareness there by Bridie Parker. The Tigers needed that to come down in the field of play. There it is. What do you think, referee Gale? Would you have gone seven tackle set or play on there? Oh, I think Bridie Parker had her uh, foot in goal and she was keen to sprint up to start with the 20-metre tap. Well earned breather for Millie Boyle and Keely Joseph. Let's see how the fresh legs go out there as Davis takes the tackle here. Short and Burton. Keller her. Kezi Apps out of the game. Davis just drifting across the field and now Aitken was looking to pass. She loses the ball and the Tigers get possession back. A rare mistake there by Aitken. She was looking to where she was going to pass it before she had it comfortably and firmly in her grasp. And now the Tigers begin their roll up field, uh, upfield. But I tell you what, the... The Roosters are relentless in their defence. Ja'Kai Whitfield with that most recent carry, huge numbers last week, more than 200 run metres, 16 tackle busts. The Tigers need to get Ja'Kai onto the ball and onto the front foot. Late in this first half, Christian Piel has just gone back onto the ground for Sarah Tongatuki, involved in that play. Yeah, if they can get Ja'Kai Whitfield into some space over on the left-hand side of the park. See you later. Here's the referee's whistle in her favour. Offside, the ruling. The Roosters are a little enthusiastic with their defensive line. So, final five minutes of the opening half. 28-6. On the back of dominant possession, the Roosters have piled on six tries. What can the Tigers give us late to... Read some belief into that half-time discussion. Well, that's a decent touch finder. We're in better territory now. Now Cialata. Product of the Campbelltown Collegians. Before that, the MacArthur Saints. She's a proud Wests Tiger. Pilar Erasembali to Pio. And she's tackled by Fotu Moala. Nevada George Staines gets the ball away, but there's not much option there for the, the backs. Staines takes the tackle, in fact. Imogen Gobrin out there for her second NRLW game. The 19-year-old's very close. Where's the punch coming from? Pilia and Rasembali. Staines, Horn. Now Lenaz. Tried to duck in and between the defenders. Instead, it's a penalty. The Tigers yeah. get a penalty and the ball will return yeah. to them. Well, this will be the third consecutive set that the Tigers 
have been able to have a crack at the Roosters line. So far unsuccessful, but very few teams can defend consecutive sets. Sophie Curtin, cup and go for Christian Pio. Betty Welsh, here's Staines. The long ball out to Whitfield and she can't toss the defence away. Mia Wood stayed on task. Curtin. And they come through the middle again, Gobrin. George, Pilia and Rasembali out the back. Betty Welsh, now Horn. Rakia doesn't risk passing. She scoots for the corner and goes in for the Tigers' second try. Well, Rakia Horn, sure hands that time. You saw a little fumble earlier, very uncharacteristic of her. But what about the hands? What about the classy passing by the Tigers? Quick hands there. And then it's on to Rakia Horn, and she's got enough pace. She's got enough fire in her belly. She's been over that line so many times before. She knows how it's done. Beautiful play, Bo Vetti Welsh. Named to play fullback, having to move into the halves, and she just attracts Bridie Parker to give Rakia Horn that free run despite the covering attempt. From Olivia Koenig. But it was a brilliant ball. Try assist again to Bo Vetti Welsh. Nice set of hands throughout the entire back line there on the right hand side of the West Tigers. But that last pass from Bo Vetti Welsh, that's why she's got five try assists and four line break assists. She does draw the attention of the defence. They trailed 16 0 and got it back to 16 6. They trailed 28 6 and now got it back to 28 10. Kick to come here from Pauline Piliare Rasembale. Two from three last weekend. And kicking them at about 60% this season. Important kick this one. Product of Apia Samoa. Trying to bring it back and it won't come back enough. So three converted tries, the difference inside the final minute of this first half. Well, the Tigers needed needed some more points on the board. And here's that last try that we see. You see the pace and the determination from Rakia Horn. It's an important try for obvious reasons, but surely at half time, they're saying, right, we're down 18 nil if the score stays this way with 40 seconds to play. We know we can score good tries if possession shifts our way in the second half. We have 35 minutes to set up our third thriller of round six in NRLW. A couple of beauties earlier today. Parramatta beating the Cowboys. St. George Illawarra taken down by the Titans, 23-22. Yeah, it's up. the game that keeps on giving this season. Now, Silata, I might get one more play here. She's, she's eating up as many metres as she can. Are they happy just to run it out or do they throw it around and try and jag it? A, a try right on half time. Out to Whitfield. Here's Pio. She just takes a hit up. Time should expire while she's on the ground. And it does. So rather than going out to the left, Pio takes the hit up at half time. It is a big lead to the Sydney Roosters. Six tries to two. They're in front, 28 points to 10. The Tigers back onto Allianz Stadium for the second half down, 28 points to 10. Christian Pio, seven carries in the first half, nearly 70 run metres. Her and Sarah Tomatuki sharing the workload really well for the Tigers, but they need lots more possession, lots more go forward, and Christian can provide that for them. News out of the Tigers. Rakia Horn has failed her HIA, so like Kezi Apps, they lose a second player to a failed hand injury assessment, meaning they activate their replacement player, Hope Tavanga. In Jersey 18, you might see Hope out there in the second half. Do the Roosters go on with the job, Tasha Gale? Well, it's not looking good for the West Tigers. 
losing a player like Rakea Horn on top of already losing your co-captain, on top of all the changes that are occurring in the spine, the Tigers have got a tough ask ahead of them, but they can't score points without possession. They've had to complete an extra 106, sorry, a total of 106 tackles, which is almost 40 more than the Roosters. So the Roosters should have fresher legs. So it's all uphill for the Tigers, but hey, maybe they can do it. Jocelyn Kelleher puts the mouth guard in there, ready for business again. And the kickoff bounces away from Keely Davis, picked up by Fotu Moala. Tawila off the bench in the first half. And Sophie Curtin involved in that tackle there. She's pretty good in the uh, right position and she can drop back and fill in a lock position as well. Koenig with the most recent carry, and then out of dummy half, they just explore around the ruck. Short and Burton. Davis for Fodu Mawala, her second run in this first set after the resumption. Maya Hill Moana starting the second half via the bench. She led all run metres in the first half. Aitken puts the ball down and now Baxter's under pressure. Tackled by Leanne Tafanga. That was good in intensity there by the Tigers. Saw the drop ball and all raced up to it. Now the kick pressure. Kelleher had a long time to measure that kick. It bounces in no man's land. Back towards an offside rooster and Fotu Moala says, I'm in play. And she smothers the recipient for the... Tigers. Well, that's a better sign for the Tigers. They get the ball back just on the 40. They now need to roll it down into the territory to get them close enough to score. Or they could just give it out there to Jakaya Whitfield because if she's in space, she can score from anywhere. Lino's playing it now through the middle. Gobrin. Imogen Gobrin. Christian P.O. Hey, let's take you! Bring it back, play it on the mark. Last tackle. Come on. Referee Mitch Curry just crossing the T's, dotting the I's, and now Bovetti Welsh. Her pass up to the edge where it was Rebecca Pollard waiting on a wing. Here's the kick from Whitfield, bouncing back towards Staines, and Staines hairs across the field, and she can't get away from Amalia Basakala. Push. A penalty, a push in the ruck. The Tigers were appealing for a sin bin. I was saying professional foul with us in a try scoring position. That's a little optimistic perhaps, it but was, a yep. penalty will help Tasha. Very hopeful. Here's Gobran again. Played only that round four loss to North Queensland before today. Sophie Curtin to P.O. Wouldn't they love to score first after the break? The Tigers from close range. You called it the number 10. Absolutely. Vetty Welsh. Whitfield, Whitfield brushing away from one, two, three. And finally, there's a rooster sliding down around the ankles in Olivia Kernick. Sophie Curtin through Nevada George. Here's Piliae Rasembale. The goal line defence holding for the Roosters. Two plays left for the Tigers. Christian Pio just looping underneath. Well handled by Burton and Koenig again. Curtin, the kick. Pilia and Rasembali, it sits up for Corbin Baxter. And the Roosters defend their line supremely there. They are the best defensive team in the competition. And that's exactly why the Tigers were throwing things at them, but the Roosters calmly kept their line together. Giving up about 12 points per game through the first five rounds. Yeah, it's not very much. Not, not many teams are scoring against this great pack that is the Roosters. It's Penrith Panthers like in the NRL. They're around that mark defensively. There's Robbie Farrah and Brett Morris. Early of old times. Burton going to Aiken. Nice 
strike straight down the ground. It's taken by Tess Staines on the full. Much better take there by Tess Staines. I like the story I read about her this week that she learned to tackle on her four brothers. For hours. <laughs> she'd, she'd practice on them. She's actually. She didn't have a choice in it, but she enjoyed <laughs> doing it. She's actually back from hand surgery, so she's missed a fair bit of footy. Boyd Cordner, Kezi Apps. Well, they're enjoying a better start to the second half than they did the first, the Tigers. They're into the game again. Whitfield couldn't get away from Koenig. Good purchase on the tackle. Koenig stays and drives Whitfield sideways. She makes, goes in there for two in a row. Every facet of Olivia Koenig's game is just on the improve. Now the grubber up towards the wing of the first half try double scorer, Mia Wood, who finds a fullback, Corbin Baxter. As we mentioned earlier on, the Roosters four and one coming into this game as Bridie Parker goes for a scurry. And the four wins, they've posted 30 or more in all of them. They're right on track to keep that trend going. Thanks to runs from Isabel Kelly like this. Kelly, one of the first half try scorers, six tries in the first half. Keely Davis spots a hole. Still going, Keely. Still running. The Roosters hooker with a great run. It finishes 15 metres out. Jordan Burton sends it to Kelleher, who straightens and takes the tackle from Cobran, not before an offload. Mia Wood for three, and Mia is held up. Desperate defence from the Tigers. Desperate defence from the Tigers, and well done, because that was a powerful run by Mia Wood. Ja'Kaya Whitfield it was. Oh. She looked very, very strong, Ja'Kaya Whitfield. She knows her way to the line, but it was great strength from the Tigers' defence to manage to work together to, to deny Ja'Kaya Whitfield that, that uh, try. So Here's a run from Keely Davis. She reads the game so very, very well, marching the, the Roosters up within striking distance. So here's... Mia Wood looking for the in goal, and Ja'Kaya Whitfield gets across there, desperate in defence, along with Tess Staines. But because it was touched by the Tigers in there, referee Mitch Curry is ruling a Roosters scrum fee. So what a break here for the leaders. Taryn Aitken might burn them on the first play. She takes a good tackle from Silata. Now the crush play. They're in. Amalia Pasekala. Too close to the line. Too powerful to stop. And the Roosters cut a break and then use it supremely. Well, there is no weakness. There's no weakness left or right. It keeps coming in the middle. Left, right, the attack is relentless from the Roosters. They're sharing the tries around now a little bit, but as you see, this powerful, powerful run there by Amalia Pasikala. Her first NRLW try, so a nice moment for Amalia, product of Hawks Bay in New Zealand. Yeah, you can see Christian Peel trying to stop her there. It looked like she was trying to get the ball. But there was no stopping her. Amalia Pasikal is only 19 years of age. She moved to league only over the last 12 months and was so impressive in the Tasha Gale Cup for Canterbury, another to come from the competition that honours you, Tasha. She impressed John Strange. He said, you better come and play for the Roosters. Now she's four games into her NRLW career and an NRLW try scorer. At long last, Jocelyn Kelleher gets a kick from virtually in front, and she makes the most of it. 34 points to 10 for the fifth time this season. The Roosters are beyond 30 points. We just see Tawila Fotimaola going off the field there. I hope she's OK. She's in discomfort, isn't she? Just mm. holding around the sternum area and, yeah, can hardly get up the tunnel, sadly, for... One of the contributors off the bench, Twila Fotumwala. Here's that try again, Maddie. Look at the power. She runs onto that ball at pace and 
Jocelyn Kelleher, much happier when her forwards score, of course. Much easier on the kicking boot for her. Don't they have some weapons through the middle? Millie Boyle, Myla, Maya Hilmawana, Billy Joseph, Wheela Fodamwala, Pani Hopawati, Amalia Fasikala. It just keeps going. And there's Baxter, who does her best at the back. Fields a kickoff from near the western wing and goes towards the middle of the ground. Now Olivia Koenig thought about the inside ball. Sergis was willing and waiting. Burton, inspired perhaps by Keeley Davis. Burton down the middle now. Well, they're finding holes the in this tired Tigers defence. I've caught held, it's reached his ball, he's chipped it on the ground. And Tess Staines concedes the penalty, the explanation there from Mitch Curry. The strip comes after the held call, so I've been unlucky. Uh, here's, a, here's a concern, and a significant one. Isabel Kelly staying on the ground, is it? Or is it Shorten Burton after this run? Let's hope that Burton is okay. Ooh. Not sure anything untoward. So the strip comes one-on-one, -on -one, but it's after the held call from Mitch Curry. And now Burton... He's having a, a knee examined. Jess Sergis just checks on her teammate. Kelly Davis and Maya Hilmoana watching on from the sideline. Well, Keely Davis has just come off for, for a bit of a break. Burton goes on. Keely Davis style scoots out from dummy half, makes a tremendous break for the Roosters, but appears to have damaged that. Looks like a right knee there, Matt. Lands awkwardly. Yep, I think that's what it is. It's nothing to do with Tess Staines going for that late steal of the ball. It's the way that Jordan Burton has landed on that knee. Just an awkward fall, so they'll take all precautions, checking the good knee against the, the other knee. And the 23-year-old former Budgie Woy Bulldog has us holding our breath. In her third season as a rooster, this is her 13th NRLW game. She's going to test the knee in terms of weight bearing. There's the numbers today. A couple of tackle busts already. Yeah, trainer calling for the interchange. Okay, well, best of luck, Shorten. We hope this is a scare and nothing more significant than that. Clearly, there's pain there. The knee twisted awkwardly. And we'll follow with interest and high hope. The reports on Shorten Burton after she has scans, you'd imagine, on that right knee. Yeah, she's walking quite gingerly, assisted, of course, but at least making some contact with the ground. And there's Keely Davis. You don't get to rest too long. So Davis quickly back onto the field. The side in front by 34 points. We've had so many cliffhangers already this season. You sort of get used to it. This 24-point margin catching us by surprise somewhat. Given the good form from both teams. Aiken dummying. The Tigers' last three losses all by skinny margins and late. She wants another one. Pasakala. Good luck trying to stop Amalia Pasakala. Well, she's got four, four Tigers all around her there. And she has a taste for tries all of a sudden, <laughs> yes. having scored the most recent one. This is Hopawati. Pani, another 19-year-old. What about the future of these players as the Roosters probe from close range and the Tigers Easy. have to number up. They'll change the it over 40. close to the line. Well, that was Keely Joseph. I'm not even sure if she had complete control of that ball, but she thought, I'll, I'll worry about getting that in my hand securely after I cross this line. But the Tigers' defence managed to turn her away. Bit of work to do. Sophie Curtin, oh, not a good 
Drilled backwards the through the legs of the dummy half. A little fortunate there, perhaps, the Tigers. You've seen plenty of those sorts of errors pulled up. And Jess Surge is just relentless in defence. She's going for the one-on-one -on -one steal. Jessica Kennedy out there in Jersey 16. As Nevada George spins away and gets a pass to Gobrin. Now the kick from Pilia e Rasembale. It's taken on the full by Corbin Baxter. And Corbin comes back at the Tigers. Then the little leg drive. She's hunting halfway and finding it. Another strong run from the Roosters number one. Bridie Parker. Trent Robinson saying this week we haven't looked past 5.30 Saturday. The Roosters needing to beat the Tigers. They're set up next week against South Sydney. And Sam Walker returning to the team. Such a long time out, originally dropped. And then, of course, injuring that knee. Showing a bit of soccer skills. It's relaxed as the Roosters from close range. And they're wrapped up. It's Kelleher. Keely Davis at dummy half, barking instructions on the last. Behind ball, it's long to Aiken, who will grub her into the legs of the Tigers. Then they fall on the ball. It's Tigers' possession. And they're not in any mood to argue about it either. And Staines comes away. The fullback today. Well, here's the turn up. Ebony Pryor shaking off that ankle injury and back out there as the Tigers promised us. For so long in that first half, it looked like she'd be out of the game. Sarah Tongatuki back out there as well. It's a tough run home for the Tigers. As the ball is lost by Whitfield and the penalty goes to the Tigers. A strip with multiple players in the tackle defending. Well, I'm not sure if... Uh, it's going to be enough, but momentum seems to be changing. It's got, everything seems to be going the Tigers' way. They've just got to capitalise on this now. Tasha, at the very least, they can add some respectability to the scoreline, given that for and against, who knows what role that is going to play in what is another bunched rugby league ladder. The yeah. Tigers go Gold Coast, Brisbane, Newcastle. Titans, Broncos, Knights on the run home. Tough draw, and Differential could well come into it when deciding the final four. Here's Sarah Tongatuki taking a little high, but no whistle over the top. It was Hopawati. Prior Pilia Erasembali nearly had the ball sneak out of her fingers. Did well to hang on to that one. Tongatuki passing at the line to Pio. The starting props combining, and now Pryor fresh onto the field. She finds Sophie Curtin, who will go in, but has she got to ground? Tackle five. No, says the referee. Yep. Oh, don't hurt yourself, Sophie Curtin. I love the way she went with so much intent at the line then, and hit and spin, and sometimes that quite often comes off. And he shakes free of the defenders. Billy Arasembali on the last, had to kick. One bounce deep in goal and then touch in goal. And that's a, a limp end to the set. Tawila Fotomoala shaking off her complaint that forced her up the tunnel. And she's OK to return. Yeah, not the end to that set that the Tigers were hoping. And here's Millie Boyle. how many defenders she attracts and then drags with her Millie Boyle Kelly to Sergis the centers combining then Sergis pushes the pass it's picked up by Betty Welsh she gets away from Parker Bo Betty Welsh said I'll stop the fun you roosters are having Bullet had the tackle eventually here's Dongatuki against so many of her former teammates Prior to Curtin. Oh Very well, she's showing it once, looking for Whitfield. She dropped the ball, and another error from the Tigers. I'm not actually sure if Bo wanted to get that to Jakai Whitfield. I think 
She was hoping to pass it behind her. You touched on how dominant the Roosters had been in terms of completions and possession and territory earlier on. It has balanced somewhat, but it's still a clear advantage to the home team. So every drop ball now and mistake by the Tigers. Just adds to what we've seen already. Well, the Tigers have had to do over 40 more tackles. So more than six extra sets. Put in that perspective, you can understand why there's a little bit of fatigue creeping in and the odd error as a result. And the Roosters are smelling that. And they're throwing the ball around with gay abandon. Karen Aiken looks a little confused. Double header tomorrow on Fox League of NRLW. Broncos Raiders, that one from Totally Workwear Stadium. The Broncos two and three off that heartbreaking loss to Newcastle last weekend. And the Raiders four and one. The same record as the Roosters coming into this round. A surprise packet early. The Raiders will be saying, well, we're not surprised. We've trained hard. We know we've got the players and on the back of Zahara, Temera and co. They're looking good, the Green Machine. Yeah, it's great to see a new franchise succeed. Followed by Knights, Sharks from McDonald Jones Stadium in RLW. Does Jesse Southwell have some more heroics for Newcastle? Against Emma Tonegato and the Sharks. That's tomorrow, the final game of the round as the Tigers go forward through Jess Kennedy. I'm going to call it, Matt. I'm going, to, I'm going to say the Sharks in an upset win. OK, let's see if that unfolds tomorrow on Fox League as Curtin goes inside the 20, but on tackle five now. The last play, Piliate Rasimbali. Here's Silata trying to slide through. And they'll hand it over. At least they're deep inside the Roosters' half. Yeah, and they're looking dangerous in attack. It's only great defence by the Roosters that are managing to turn them away. Is Baxter, is there a reason you've gone with the Sharks tomorrow over Newcastle? Well, I just think they've, they've finally got their first choice uh, 17 out there last week and they put, put on 40 points. Things have clicked, they've gelled, and I think they're on the hunt, the Sharks. Brady Parker and uh, Mia Wood. There are the two wingers. We've seen the two centres passing towards each other through the middle. Now the two wingers. This is Rugby League Retro. <laughs> yeah, great centre pairing. Now, Keely Davis, you're right, we still say centre pairing, but they rarely pair, do they, as Boyle? Look to offload. Final play, Aitken. Goes to the line and chip kicks. And then there's a collision between... Well, I thought it was two Tigers, but there was a rooster in there on Tess Staines. It was Isabel Kelly, and the bump did enough to force Staines to ground. It was a brave take having someone like Isabel Kelly motoring in on you, take a difficult kick, and then take the hit. As we see it here, it, there's nothing easy about it. She only just made contact with the ball, and she's... Whitfield. Coming to this game, she had 56 tackle busts on the back of 16 last week. And that's 16 more than any other player in the league. Ja'Kai Whitfield, but she hasn't seen the amount of ball she'd like today as the penalty goes to her team. Maybe here's a chance for the Tigers to go to Whitfield as players warm up preparing for a return at Smyre Hill Moana. We saw Hope Tavunga there, the 18th player, the replacement player for the Tigers, just repeating Rakia Horn out of the game, HIA, Kezi Apps out of the game, HIA. So two Tigers, their edge forward and their right centre succumbing. Whitfield. Yeah, it looks like they've heard your call. Get Kai Whitfield more involved. Prior on to P.O. who had room to wind up. Now gets the offload away. Staines knocks it back for Pryor. Here's Curtin. Sophie straightens into Odessa Bulle. Piliae Rasimbale. It goes through Betty Welsh. Now Tafunga towards the sideline. Leanne Tafunga runs out of room as Isabel Kelly forces her into touch. Yeah, that woman on screen there, Isabel Kelly. 
We talk about the power she is in attack, but look at the strength she shows in defence. Leanne Tafunga, not a hard player to stop in her own right, but Izzy Kelly makes easy work of taking her over the sideline. Only two roosters have more than 100 run metres, and it's the two centres, Sergis and Kelly. Isabel involved there defensively. But week in, week out, it's the go forward on the fringes, provided by their representative centres that gives them so much. Hilton Moana back out there. Six internationals for New Zealand, including the World Cup final. And now more metres for Kelly. Davis. To Hill Moana again. Kelly Joseph almost got a touch to the ball. And here's the replacement player about to be activated. Hope Tavanga making her NRLW debut. Not the circumstances she wanted to do that, but she'll take it. The second debutante today behind the Roosters winger Mia Wood. As the kick comes here and it's taken by Staines at the back. Well, let's just hope that Hope Tavaga can bag herself a double for the Tigers and make the scoreline a little bit more respectable. Well, Mia Wood did so in quick time. There's plenty of time left for Hope to get over. And now Tafunga. On for her NRLW debut. Strong from Josie Lenaz. Going above her weight. Teacher by day showing the students how to run as now we see Sarah Tongatuki doing the same. She's running backwards, still making lots of metres, but still looking for an offload. <laughs> she does it all, Sarah Tongatuki. Ebony Pryor off the back of the run from Tongatuki takes good metres. Now the kick from Staines across the ground. It was there. It was game on for the Tigers. They couldn't take it cleanly. Whitfield knocks the ball on two on one. And the Tigers couldn't execute. Yeah, not good for the Tigers there. Kaya Whitfield just needed to hang on to that ball. I think it was catchable. Get the Tigers somewhat back into this game. Here's the kick. Oh, she's leapt up a bit short of the ball and her arms just aren't quite long enough then to reach it. Sadly, we've had a bit of injury updating to provide today and Short and Burton out of the game with that knee injury and scans will be required to determine the severity of that injury. Fingers crossed as Millie Boyle has another carry. That coming on top of a couple of setbacks for the Tigers. Kezi Apps and Rakia Horn forced out HIA. Bule gets the ball away. Now Parker, two tries already. Corbin Baxter, here's your fifth of the season. Corbin goes in again. And the Roosters will kick for 40 points. Well, they're sharing the love. They're sharing the try scoring. Aside from the uh, double from the debutante, Mia Wood, we see captain and fullback Corbin Baxter notch up a try for this game but they're just running rampant the roosters it's just all on the back of so much defense that the tigers have had to to produce today so the roosters here have equaled their highest score in nrlw this kick no pressure is for the highest total in six years of nrlw no team has ever been to 40 points are the Roosters about to be first? Are the Roosters stoppable, is my question. Bridie Parker, got great ball in both hands, good pace, sees her captain pushing up like a, like a great fullback does, always pushing up in support. And it's an easy pass, and then an easier try there for Corbin Baxter. Let's clarify that. They've equaled their highest score. This is for the Roosters' highest total, 40 points, which would equal the highest NRLW total. The Sharks, the Broncos, and the Dragons have done it. And now you can add the Roosters to that list. They've also hit 40 points. Jocelyn Kelleher makes sure of that. 40 points to 10. It's imposing from an imposing team. 
30 points the difference, under 10 minutes remaining. And they'll hope to be part of NRL and NRLW Grand Final Day. There's a Father's Day present for next week, a ticket to the Grand Final Extravaganza, a core stadium, October 1. Will the Roosters be represented on the day and in how many of the games? Because after this, Roosters, Tigers, NRL on Fox League. The Roosters win that. They'll set up a showdown with South Sydney next week, which depending on the Cowboys outcome against Penrith could decide that final playoff position. You got your calculator out, Tasha oh. Gale. You ready for this final week? I'm absolutely bamboozled. I just know the Roosters, it's a must win. And as he said, some other things need to fall into place. Now Aiken drifting across field. They won't stop here. Here's Bridie Parker away again. She has Aiken in field. But the defence does enough to shut down that option. Parker takes the tackle. And there's still four plays left here. Baxter to Boyle, who beat one. But not Christian Pio or Nevada George. There's a problem for a Tiger who stayed down after that tackle. Olivia Koenig looking to offload. It comes out forward. So there's a bailout from the Tigers, and thankfully, I think it's Christian yeah. Pio is back on her feet. Well, that's a relief for the Tigers, especially you don't want to lose another player, not as special as uh, Christian Pio. But we're seeing, look at the pace on Bridie Parker. She moves back inside, well wrapped up by the Tigers' defence in Tess Staines. Just seeing what happened here, Christian Peel. I'm sure that she won't mind me mentioning this, Bridie Parker, but that, that ACL, it can it can take an effect on your speed, on your recuperation, and then your, the way you return to rugby league. But the speed she has shown us and the confidence she has in her body, it's great to see, and a credit to her to come back from that significant injury the way she has, Tasha. Absolutely. She, you can see she did a rehab well, and it's a credit to the Roosters as well, making sure she was kept involved, kept in the rehab, reaping uh, the rewards. She scored her second NRL double this afternoon. Can she bag her first NRLW hat-trick in the final seven minutes as the Tigers have the ball for the time being, but only momentarily. There's an error that's picked up by Maya Hill Moana. And the Tigers will do well to hold the Roosters out here as Boyle powers forward again. That run takes her above 100 run metres again. They change the point of the attack. The inside ball now. Oh no, for Corbin Baxter, who grimaces in pain. And it's, it's not a knee as I first thought. Well, she, she put her hand on her knee hip. and then a back. Keely Davis. This was a really awkward tackle. Look at Sarah Tongatuki throwing herself and oh no for Sarah. This this could be ugly. Let's have a look at it again. You don't want to jump to conclu conclusions, but it is a grab, a spin and a drop. And what appears to be onto the legs of an, an opposition player. Well, the good thing is... And the bus has picked okay. that up. Mitch Curry is about to talk to yeah. Sarah Tongatuki. So job, so it's on report, you're in the bin. Yeah, 10 in the bin for Sarah Tongatuki. She was very quick to apologise to yeah. Corbin Baxter, but that won't count, sadly, for Sarah Tongatuki, who's been binned for... Got to call it as you see it, Tasha. It, it looked like a classic hip drop. Yeah, we'll have to see what the match review committee comes up with with that one. Absolutely. Okay, the Roosters through Keely Joseph. She'll go close, Keely. Look at those legs driving her into the in goal. Count the defenders. One, two, three, four required to stop Keely. And no small bodies involved there. It, it took four strong players. I thought if, they, if she keeps marching, she's going to go over the dead ball line. Here's Boyle. Hasn't it been a rough day for the Tigers now? Injuries to Horn and Axe. The 18th player activated. Now the sin bidding of Sarah Tomatuki and Kelly. Trying to get the ball away, but 
unable to do so because of Josie Lenaz wrapping up the arm. Bridie Parker, it goes through Aitken. Boyle. Still two plays left. Best part of six minutes. Kelleher, now Aitken. Corbin Baxter's A-OK, -okay. save two. The hat-trick hero, Ondabu, Mia Wood. She has three. Now, the Roosters are in record territory. It's been an afternoon to savour the 24-year-old debutante, Mia Wood. Well, how about that? A hat trick of tries, but look at the hands, look at the shape. I'm telling you, it's poultry in motion, Matt. Absolute poultry in motion as they fling the ball out to the right side. Mia Wood picks up her third try of the afternoon for the Roosters and on debut. That's got to be, well, that is a record. I think you mentioned it earlier. Well, Mia will say to Dad Garth, you might have knocked out some high-profile opponents, but I've delivered a knockout today against the Tigers. Three tries on debut. The first NRLW player to do that in game number one, to score a hat-trick. And the Roosters have the highest total in NRLW history. The service from the inside has been fantastic, but Mia hasn't put a finger or a foot wrong today. No, she's managed to stay away from that sideline, keep her wing really well-timed as the Roosters do their thing to get it out to her. Kelleher brings this one back across the face. She's four from nine today, and that look probably says it all because they've been from out wide predominantly. Well, we love it when a winger scores, especially on debut. But uh, I think Jocelyn Kelleher is just going, well, well, that'll do. How about we have a few more up the middle? Here's the hat-trick from Mia Wood. Just one of the storylines out of round six NRLW, and it's a beaut storyline. We love welcoming players to this expanding competition. And when they arrive with a bang, with a crash-bang wallop like she has three tries, it's a story worth telling. Here's the way the Roosters have gone to uncharted territory in terms of most points in a match. We probably didn't need a statement from the Roosters about their premiership intentions this season. They've certainly provided one today. A fourth straight win, building on three 30-point totals. Who's to say they can't get to 50? Well, That's the target now. Up. Aitken, long, Parker knocks it on. The pass was high. She stuck up an arm in hope yeah. off the hands and forward. Where they are looking to continue to pile on those points. They're, they're not slowing down at all. And they've got the advantage now. They're so good at flinging the ball around. But not to be that time. And the Tigers now will get to feed this scrum on. No. They'll get the ball back on the 40. Is there a late highlight for the Tigers? Jess Kennedy would love a try. She's driven backwards in that tackle by Olivia Koenig, who week in, week out, just quietly and unassumingly goes about her business so effectively. Yeah, but Olivia Koenig, I've been watching. I've seen those great passes that you've added to your game. 14 tackles today without a miss. More than 100 run metres. Two line break assists. What a player. Bilia Air Rasimbale for Imogen Gobrin. Comes through the Raw Academy, the West Tigers Pathway Program. Imogen, as so many of these players have. Boveni Welsh. 11 players out of that 2022 Harvey Norman Premiership team. At the West Tigers now in the NRLW lineup. The kick, the grubber, down for Corbin Baxter. Corbin stumbles into. Cialata. Brady Parker off her wing. Two minutes left. There's time for the Tigers to post 50. The run ahead, they go Parramatta next week at Gosford. We'll come back to that because Sergis is downfield in a hurry. She tries to position her other centre. Isabel Kelly. Great tackle. Fantastic.
Tech Rugby League. Jakiah Whitfield. What a stop. And out of dummy half, Jocelyn Kelleher. She forced Whitfield to double up, to back up her original effort. Jakiah couldn't do that. And even the goal kicker, Jocelyn Kelleher, is scoring out wide. Well, what about this run from Jess Surges? There's so many attempts to grab it there, but she changes direction and pushing up in support is her centre pairing, who normally different, different sides of the field, but they're stringing it together here and you just see too much work. It was a great tackle initially by Jakiah Whitfield, but she was never going to hold off that second lunge from dummy half. Look at the run from Surges, and not for the first time today. It is a centre pairing. It's a centre pairing again under John Strange. It is John Strange. He's letting them play to cues. He's teaching them, forget that old fashioned format, left centre, right centre. You girls play to cues and they play off uh, Taryn Aiken, who's doing it so very, very well. And they've gone, well, let's just run away with this game. Jocelyn Kelleher, no one to blame but yourself here for this tough one. A try and four goals. So 12 points for the game. If she makes it 14, she'll take the Roosters and their happy fans to delirium, to 50 points. The old record mark was 40. They've blown that out of the water. Jocelyn Kelleher for 50. It comes back late, missing the target. And with seconds to go only, they're happy with 48-10. They would have liked 50, but maybe they'll have to wait until another day. Smart play by Kelleher. Realising Whitfield had just made that tackle. She was gassed and has been caught short in the corner. Well, there are 10 seconds left here, Tasha. Come on, if I could send you back onto the field. What would you be thinking here? Give it some air, throw it around, let's have some fun. Let's pretend it's 10 all with 10 seconds to play. Yes, and I think that's what they've been doing for the last five, ten minutes, most definitely. They're throwing it around. Actually, if it was 10 all, they'd be careful. So we don't want them to be careful. We want Millie Ball to offload this and the Roosters to chase a rare milestone. They're content with the win. A fantastic win. A big, big result for the Roosters, who've run in 10 tries to two. They're the top two defensive teams in the league before this game. But Brett Kamali can only wonder what has happened against the Roosters, who win it 48 points to 10.